Hello, and welcome to this online training on using Intel Simic Simulator and Ashling Risk Free IDE for Intel FPGAs. Feel free to pause, move forward, or go back as you need during this presentation. At the top right of the presentation, you will find a list of helpful links and resources on the subject. Let's get started. The Intel FPGA portfolio supports this transformation, including discrete and integrated FPGAs that are expected to improve processing efficiency, task specificity, and connectivity. Intel FPGAs can provide a variety of workloads in network processing as well as compute and storage acceleration. FPGAs are mass-produced, standard product ICs that can be reconfigured in the field to accelerate virtually any digital algorithm. They offer greater throughput, execution speed, and energy efficiency than CPUs on computationally intensive parts of algorithms, but with the ability to adapt quickly to changes in algorithms, data patterns, or performance needs. They can be reconfigured in the field to accelerate virtually any digital algorithm. They are available in five current families, Max, Cyclone, Aria, Stratix, and the newest family Agilex, all with of increasing capacity, performance, and feature sets. The objectives for this e-learning are to integrate Ashling Risk-Free IDE for Intel FPGAs with Intel Simic Simulator to debug applications in the target system, use the command line interface and simulate hardware. This training has also the objective to demonstrate hardware simulation using an Intel Simic session in Ashling Risk-Free IDE for Intel FPGAs. The agenda topics to cover during this e-learning are the introduction to Intel Simics and Ashling Risk-Free IDE for Intel FPGAs as well as system requirements. Then there will be a demonstration to simulate and debug with Intel Simics and Ashling Risk-Free IDE for Intel FPGAs. The Intel Simic Simulator for Intel FPGAs is a full system simulator supporting the software development process through hardware simulation. Ashling Risk Free IDE for Intel FPGAs provides a software with a graphical interface to the Intel Simic Simulator for Intel FPGAs software that allows you to control the simulation progress with a mouse and buttons in a GUI instead of entering commands on a CLI, which is also supported. Debug target software using the Ashling Risk Free IDE for Intel FPGAs debugger to view progress through your source code, set breakpoints, examine variable values and register contents, and view stack traces. Integrate Ashling Risk Free IDE for Intel FPGAs and Intel Simic Simulator as a complete development environment for your target software. You can write your target program, test it, run simulations, and debug it all in one location on your target hardware. To download the Intel Simic Simulator, you can go to the provided link in the resources section at the top right of this presentation or to intel.com and use the search box. This is the list of requirements to get started with Intel Simics and Ashling Risk Free IDE for Intel FPGAs. You can also go to the user guide for each of the resources provided inside the list for this e-learning. Additional to the Intel Simic Simulator, Ashling Risk Free IDE for Intel FPGAs provides an IDE for Intel FPGA ARM based hard processor systems and RISC V based NEOS 5 processors. The IDE provides a friendly interaction with the target software, allowing you to inspect source code, set breakpoints, observe and update variables, values, and memory content, among other features, using the hardware simulator. Ashling Risk Free IDE for Intel FPGAs is part of the Intel Cordis Prime software bundle installation, or it can also be downloaded and installed individually. The Intel Cordis Programmer and Tools installation is required to use Ashling Risk Free IDE for Intel FPGAs. Please refer to the user guides and installation links inside the resources provided for this presentation to go directly to the necessary installation instructions to work with Intel Simic Simulator and Ashling Risk Free IDE for Intel FPGAs. To get started with an Intel Simic session inside Ashling Risk Free IDE for Intel FPGAs, 
it is necessary to work from the install directory for Intel Simix. Then to open Ashling RISC free IDE for Intel FPGAs, the path to the install must be added with the export path equals command. This is to indicate where Ashling RISC free IDE for Intel FPGAs is installed and then create a workspace for the Intel Simix session inside the IDE. The command Simix RISC free can now be used to open and launch the IDE. When the workspace is created and Ashling RISC free IDE for Intel FPGAs is launched, a new project is created under the current Intel Simix project directory. The metadata is also written in the workspace directory indicated to complete the project. The project must contain the script for debugging during the Intel Simix debug session. The Project Explorer tab in the main window should show the files that are part of the simulation automatically with the launch of Ashling RISC free IDE for Intel FPGAs. Some of the files that are part of the simulation include the Simix file, the binaries for simulation, C files, symbol files, among others. If the tab for the Project Explorer is not visible, the option to open the view is in the menu at the top in the window option and then show view and Project Explorer. There are other options available there like breakpoints, debug, among other useful tools. The options to configure the debug session are in the run menu at the top. Then inside the debug configuration window, at the bottom the option for Simix session must be selected to start. Then the configurations for the session must be done to choose the Simix file and name the project. Once the view is changed, now the options for debugging become available, including features for debugging in the Intel Simix CLI. The CLI works in the same way as the Intel Simix CLI simulator from the terminal. The commands and capabilities work in the same way. To start the simulation, the option run as in the button with the green circle can be used. Some of the options for debugging and different views of the session are processor status view. This view shows the state of each CPU, running, suspended. It also shows the current program counter value in each one of the processors and the stack frame. Disassembly view. Shows the assembler code that the selected processor in the processor status window is being executed. This shows the address and the instructions. Observability windows. These windows provide additional views of the target software, variables and expressions view. The debug session breakpoints view, hardware, registers view that shows CPU registers and memory view. Adding breakpoints for debugging can be done through the Intel Simix CLI or through the options when clicking inside the file and selecting the option add breakpoint. A couple of command examples for debugging are step line, BP, list, BP, delete. These can be used in the CLI. In this demo, we will explore how to set up a debug session in Ashling Risk Free IDE for Intel FPGAs to use with Intel Simix Simulator. A workspace folder needs to be created to work with the project in Ashling Risk Free IDE for Intel FPGAs. The workspace folder needs to be created at the same level as the project folder. This will automatically load the necessary files to work with the Intel Simix project inside the IDE and allow the creation of a Simix session. Then to use the command, Simix risk free, the path to the install for Ashling risk free IDE for Intel FPGAs needs to be exported. The risk free directory is normally inside the Intel FPGA folder install. Then use the command to launch the workspace and start working with the IDE. Launch the workspace in the directory created when prompted. Know that to use Intel Simix and Ashling Risk Free IDE for Intel FPGAs you need to first initialize the project, deploy the virtual platform and add the location for the binaries for the target system in the Simix file. These steps were done previous to this demo to set up the simulation. In the main window you will see that the Project Explorer window has all the files that are part of the project. To get started a debug configuration needs to be created with Intel Simix integration. For this, 
The options are displayed when right-clicking on the project name. Then in the menu there's the option for selecting debug configurations. Inside this menu the Simic session must be configured. From there, the file for the session can be set, and set the name of the debug session. The debug option will start the session. Once the window is closed, to start debugging press on the button for run. This button is located on the bar in the main window. If the perspective doesn't change, the menu window shows the options where debug view can be selected. If the tab for the project explorer is not available when switching the perspective, this can be shown in the window menu at the top and then in show view find the option for project explorer as done previously with the debug view. At the bottom the Intel Simix CLI will become available. To get started with the simulation, the run command will start the booting for the hardware targeted. This might take some seconds to complete. To start the simulation, the command run is being used in the Intel Simix CLI at the bottom. The serial console for the targeted device will also become available showing the booting for the device. After the device booted, it will continue to the Linux OS prompt. To start debugging with symbol files, the Intel Simix CLI prompt is being used to configure the service node to make a connection to the target system to send a symbol file for debugging. Then the symbol file is loaded to the simulation, but also needs to be available in the target system. The connection is done via network with the target system to send the simulation file. Then a breakpoint is added to the simulation on the main function through the command bp. Source underscore location. Break main. Now the file can be executed in the target system and wait for the breakpoint. After this, we can take a look at the list and the information for the breakpoints. In the main window there are some other tabs and sections that provide information about the simulation and where the breakpoint was triggered in the C file, as well as the activity in the simulation. Breakpoints can be added also through the options directly on the C file with a right click. It will do the same as what was done through the Intel Simic CLI at the bottom through the breakpoint manager. The pcell command can be used to determine which is the current front-end processor selected or to switch to a different processor by adding the complete reference to the core. Then we can go step by step for the rest of the simulation. The simulation will stop once there is a breakpoint triggered, and it can be initialized again by using the command run. The serial console for the device is running the file after the command to step is used, and the simulation resumed after breakpoint. Once the simulation is stoked you can see that the information is displayed in the Intel Simix CLI. Finally, another option available through the Debug Configurations menu or the Project Explorer is to add symbol files to the simulations as we did with the Intel Simix CLI. Then point to the symbol file that needs to be added and its settings in the option for the top of the tab. This concludes the demonstration for the integration with Ashling Risk Free IDE for Intel FPGAs. To continue to learn go to the Resources section in this presentation where you will find more information on installation commands, examples and how to deploy the target system. Intel provides multiple avenues in which to learn about Intel FPGA products. There is the Intel FPGA YouTube channel, which contains 5 minutes quick videos along with longer more in-depth training videos. There is the Intel FPGA training website, where you can access e-learning courses made up of narrated slides presented in an interactive player, some courses with labs and demos. Lastly, you can also enroll in a live, instructor-led course presented either in person at an office local to you or virtually over the web. All instructor-led courses have hands-on labs exercises to practice the concepts you learn. If you need more assistance, Intel FPGA provides many self-help resources for you to access. For example, there are web pages, called landing pages, dedicated to specific FPGA technology like in high-speed interfaces. You can also view and post questions to the community forum, 
which is monitored by skilled Intel FPGA applications engineers. The Intel FPGA training team is always looking to improve our material and welcome any feedback you may have. Please email FPGA training at intel.com with any of your thoughts or comments. This concludes the training. Thank you and have a good day.